Now, I love Trevor Henderson's monsters. I love monsters in general, and I am trying to look for more because there's so many that have gone unmentioned and some that need special attention. Now, we're not doing a Trevor Henderson monster today. Today, we're going to be answering a question that I wanted to know the answer to and that a lot of you have also asked as well. So let's attempt to answer. What would happen if Calvin from the movie Light <laughs> met the Xenomorph from the Alien franchise. Now to save some time and to make this easier to explain for those who have not seen the movie, Calvin is a name that was given to a Martian alien and the main antagonist of the 2017 movie called Life. You absolutely need to see it, you guys. If you haven't seen it, you don't want any spoilers, don't watch this video any further, go watch it, trust me. This species is believed to have wiped out all life on Mars, therefore making it an apex predator. Each cell belonging to Calvin is a muscle, nerve, and an eye at the same time. They claim that it is semi-intelligent, but I don't don't know how true that is because he has some ways about him that makes him seem a lot more intelligent than us humans. Calvin cracked a coolant system in her suit. Commander, Calvin knows exactly what he's doing. It's growing smarter. Now for the Xenomorph's bio, and we're specifically talking about Xenomorph XX121. This aggressive predatory creature is an extraterrestrial hive-based endoparasitoid species with a multi-stage life cycle, possibly originating from the planet Proteus, also known as Xenomorph Prime. This creature is considered one of the deadliest of all known alien species. They require a host in order to lay their eggs or to reproduce. It will take on features and also possibly behaviors depending on the host into which the embryo is implanted which it then bursts violently out of, killing the host before it bursts the new xenomorph. This creature has an armored exoskeleton. It has a pair of inner jaws inside of its main jaws that it can shoot out several inches to cut straight through metal and various other hard materials. This thing is super territorial. It doesn't ask questions, it just attacks. I love these guys because as I was growing up around them, I, well, I didn't grow up around them physically, you know what I mean? But they intrigued me because for some reason I had a velociraptor vibe from them from Jurassic Park. Maybe it's because of the kind of genre the movies fall in, but these creatures are the bee's knees. They are also super stealthy. They are like killing machines. They were engineered specifically to wipe out species, but so is Calvin. Both of these creatures are on par with each other when it comes to intelligence and ferocity. The only thing that seems to distinguish Calvin from the xenomorph is that he doesn't readily attack something if he's curious about it. In the movie, we saw Calvin exploring his surroundings as though he's seeing everything for the first time, which he possibly was. He didn't seem to attack anything until it posed a threat to him. Only then did he change to suit his environment, which was very hostile, or at least that's what thought. The xenomorphs just don't care. They don't give a damn. Honey badger don't give a shit. It just takes what it wants. Their main goal in life is to conquer and procreate. That is it. They're not curious about their surroundings. They don't care about who's their next door neighbor. As far as they're concerned, everything is food. Everything is hostile. The only thing that matters is their species and the propagation of thus. So, knuckle crack. Just because I don't have a sound effect for that. There's so Whoa. But what would happen if Calvin and the Xenomorph met each other? Let's just say that the Xenomorph was implanted on Mars or something. It was already an adult Xenomorph. And Calvin was, well, at his basic stage that we saw him at in the latter part of the movie. Let's be serious. That is on par with the Xenomorph. What would happen? Calvin would see this new species and he would probably behave the same way he did with everything else that we've seen him interact with. Intrigued and quite engrossed. Let's just say from the last time we saw Calvin at the very end of the movie, he hadn't eaten anything. He was literally just teleported back to Mars or somewhere else where now he and the Xenomorph are squaring off. Would he be able to even survive with gravity? I mean, the chances that he got that big is because there was no gravity that really limited his mobility or constrict his movement. So how would Calvin's body react to sudden gravity? After all, he is a blobby little starfish jellyfish creature. The thing is, he'd be quite fine, even faster 
than the xenomorph, Calvin is able to adapt quite quickly on a biological level. You see, the xenomorphs can learn to solve problems based on what their environment or situation throws at them. They mentally adapt. However, in order to change their physiology, they have to reproductively adapt, which means that they're going to have to find a host on whatever environment they're at and reproduce using that thing. So, since Calvin can adapt much faster, whatever his body needs to, it can provide him with that. He wouldn't have a problem with gravity. His body would sense that there is a lot of weight here, there's a lot of pressure here, let me get stronger or let me change myself in such a way to properly suit the environment. Whatever the case, Calvin would always change his body, whether it's consciously or not, to outmatch the current residents of whatever environment he's in. So now that he has mobility, sort of, he'd probably roll himself along or maybe his little fin-like appendages would turn into little legs or modified versions of them, he would see the xenomorph. Maybe the xenomorph would see him first because based on what I know about the two, the xenomorph is a lot more stealthy. You can sneak up on Calvin. Chances are you can't sneak up on a xenomorph. But let's say Calvin did in fact discover the xenomorph. Eating something, or maybe not eating, because when have you ever seen a xenomorph eat? Perhaps it's licking itself. Calvin sneaks up on it, he's very enthralled by the new vision in front of him, and he goes to investigate. He doesn't touch, he just watches. Of course, the xenomorph quickly realizes that Calvin's there. It violently hisses, its strong tail wagging viciously air. The xenomorph has no idea what Calvin is, and Calvin just stands there, his appendages wagging wildly, just curious about what the xenomorph's gonna do. Of course, knowing how Xenomorphs are, they are pro-offensive, they attack without asking questions, and quickly and expertly leaps forward to make a kill. Of course, it attacks Calvin using its inner pharyngeal jaws to pierce him, or at least it tries to, because for some reason, no matter what people try to do to Calvin, it's like a skin with a suit of armor. But to be fair, I haven't seen him trying to pierce him with anything. So let's say this actually cuts straight through Calvin tearing a chunk of his flesh out. Now Calvin is totally in aggressive mode. He has now confirmed that this thing is dangerous. It is not friendly and he goes in to kill it. He wraps himself around its face, trying to cut off the airway. But the xenomorph doesn't breathe air in the same way that we do. Calvin also quickly realizes that the xenomorph has an exoskeleton. He quickly writhes around the creature, crawling into every nook and cranny, trying to find a way to get into the creature. The xenomorph then bucks wildly, trying to get at Calvin. It uses its hand and its claws to try and rip him off. But our boy Calvin has an iron grip that he utilizes with his entire body. He has tiny teeth that is equipped for ripping straight through flesh quite quickly, but this is no ordinary creature as the xenomorph does have that hard exoskeleton. The only way into the xenomorph is possibly through the mouth or some other opening. The xenomorph bucking, not being able to get Calvin off of its back, uses the scythe on its tail to stab at Calvin. As the tail pierces Calvin, finally Calvin quickly wraps himself around the tail, which is the new aggressor, goes to the tip of it and breaks the tail with his entire body. Body. We've seen him do this quite easily in his smaller form in the movie, and surprisingly, even though Calvin is a small looking starfish creature, he is way too strong for his size. Maybe possibly even stronger than the xenomorph. <laughs> Calvin can also utilize tools as we've seen him do in the movie, and so he uses the scythe to then insert it or impale it into the xenomorph, effectively hurting it with its own biological weapon. While all of this is happening, the xenomorph is still running around quite wildly, trying to dislodge Calvin. Calvin knows to stay right out of reach. Calvin is so intelligent, in many ways I feel like he's way more intelligent than the xenomorphs. While they can solve problems eventually, Calvin seems to be more quick on the draw. When he was trying to break out of that glass in the movie, it didn't take him any time to figure out that he needed to go get a tool to pierce his way through. Surely the xenomorphs did this as well, but Calvin seemed to have acted on this faster. Now that he's bigger, he seems a lot more intelligent and quick. He's very witty and surprisingly way more agile than the xenomorph is. Calvin also has sort of a body like an octopus where he can fit through the smallest of spaces. That little hole that he pierced inside the xenomorph where acid is now spilling out of, Calvin utilizes that hole to make an entry into the xenomorph. Now I know it's you're all wondering, and we knew we would get to this, does the acid from the xenomorph affect Calvin? After all, in the movie, we didn't see him come into contact with anything acidic. We can surmise that as Calvin is trying to insert himself into the xenomorph, he would quickly squeal and shove himself away from the xenomorph, realizing that, wow, the insides of this thing is really freaking hot. If they were to continue fighting, providing that the xenomorph would be able to catch Calvin, which it probably wouldn't realistically, but let's just say that it did. On the xenomorph wiki, it says that xenomorphs possess a great physical 
strength, having been known to break through metal vent covers and welded steel doors with little effort, and even of breaking down reinforced pressurized doors over time. Their large clawed talons are more than capable of tearing humans apart, while their primary jaws are capable of producing a bite strength estimated at 6,000 psi. Not to mention those inner jaws I talked about are like little bullets, or those deadbolt things that they used to kill cattle. If the Xenomorph were to get its hands on Calvin, hold him down, and utilize their jaws, they would probably rip Calvin apart. So it seems by that suggestion and speculation that the Xenomorphs would win hands down. I mean, Calvin would put up a good fight, but Xenomorph would win. Except, we forget about one little detail in the movie. You see, they speculated that there was already life on Mars, and Calvin was the only life that remained. I mean, there's been this theory floating around that Mars was probably a civilization a long time ago just like Earth, and now it's just a barren wasteland. It was said, in theory, that Mars once had a rich atmosphere just like Earth that was stripped away by solar winds in the early days of the solar system, causing the planet to dry out. Mars also has gravity, even though it's weaker than Earth's gravity due to it being smaller, it is 38% of that of Earth. So putting together what they said in the movie about this alien life form having killed everything else that was on that planet, it's safe to assume, in theory, that whether Calvin actually came from Mars or somewhere else, that he is responsible, or he and his species are responsible for obliterating everything on the planet. Maybe Solar Winds did it, and maybe Calvin had a hand in that, which would mean that his species is very old. And maybe the reason why he was laying dormant is because he's already eaten everything, and we've seen throughout the movie and life that whenever Calvin eats anything, or there's a surplus of food, he grows. Is it possible that Calvin was actually a really huge kaiju, daikaiju type monster that fed on everything? And because you cannot sustain your mass if you do not constantly have a flow or an influx of energy going into you, you die, or in Calvin's case, goes dormant, breaks down on a cellular level, and goes back to what we saw before. It is totally possible that what we're looking at is the ultimate planet eater in its truest form. Now let's say that Mars did have a civilization before we even knew of the planet itself. Let's say that there were already human-like creatures or creatures that were technologically advanced before humans were even ever a thing in the very early stages of Earth. And they knew about this alien that came down to their planet, or maybe he was part of their planet, or what have you. If he's the only thing that is still surviving out there in some way, shape, or form, it means that he won whatever battle ensued on that planet. Now, of course, there are other possibilities. There's a possibility that Calvin and his species just outlived whatever was there. Maybe there were solar winds that took away all the life off of that planet that stripped the atmosphere, but because Calvin is so resilient, he survived. Which is also a testament to the kind of creature he is. He is indestructible, because even if you break him up into a cellular level, you break him down to a cellular level, he never really dies. Look at how quick he was able to evolve out of a cell. And since every cell, as they described in the movie, is a muscle, a brain, and an eye, if you chop Calvin up into a million pieces, he never dies. There's just more of him. And those little pieces can become their own individual Calvins, which is quite frightening when you really think about it. Because here's the other thing. The other thing with Calvin is that he evolves based on his environment. He eats whatever is a threat, and he evolves based on the threat. They burned him with an oxygen candle before, and then after that, it seemed harder to kill him. Now you can say that he was trying to run away because he didn't want to get killed because he's vulnerable. But for a creature that essentially has unlimited regeneration, a bullet through him essentially isn't going to kill him outright. It may break up his body and cause each of his individual pieces to have to eat to grow to their size again. I'm not saying that there's no way to kill him at all, but compared to how we've seen Xenomorphs be killed and Calvin's biological makeup, I think that putting the two up against each other, it is surprisingly easier to kill the Xenomorph than it is to kill Calvin. In theory, the Xenomorph would be able to rip Calvin apart, but Calvin has more intelligence than the Xenomorph. He has more power power than the Xenomorph, relatively. And I think that because of his regeneration ability, being able to go through the wound, he would be able to withstand the acid for a while as he's trying to go inside the Xenomorph. But let's just say that's not effective. Let's say that it's just too much for Calvin and he would dissolve before he even reached anywhere. Let's say the acid is something that could dissolve Calvin's exterior or significantly hurt him. He still has something that the Xenomorphs don't have. A total prehensile body, which means he can wrap any part of his body, all of his appendages, around an object and inflict impressive damage with immense force. Consider how little he was when he broke the scientist's hand. Being a larger creature, he would be able to do the same thing for the Xenomorph. He would be able to expertly wrap 
wrap himself around the xenomorph's head and crush it, or crush any part of its bones, or break its bones, or crush its entire body. Now mind you, the acid would leak out and hurt him, but if it was only a little bit of acid getting on the surface, it wouldn't outright kill him. He would be maimed, but it's not like this kind of creature could not regenerate every part of his body. Based on what we were told in the movie about every part of him being its own muscle, eye, and brain. Which means that in all sense of the word, Calvin seems to be an organism that is made of a colony of organisms. As weird as that sounds, some kind of man of war jellyfish that is now supremely cognizant. So I would say, based on what we know about Calvin, unless there's any other weaknesses that come to the surface about him, that he would definitely win against a xenomorph. Of course, it would be able to take him apart, but outright kill him? No. Calvin definitely takes this one. What do you guys think about this? Let us know in the comments, and thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.